Hello and welcome to the Armchair Monologues from the problem of being awake. My name's Ben and I will talk to you for as long as you want to listen. Um, now, the subject of today's one is identitarians and ideologues. And I'll explain what those are. So, an identitarian is, it used to be associated strictly really with the far right. You know, uh, neo-Nazis, uh, the Aryan Brotherhood, that kind of thing. It, it's where their belief uh, about somebody based uh, on their uh, identity of who, what group identity they are was obviously hateful and harmful. But now we've switched it and on the left you have many more identitarians. Identity politics has ruled the left for about 20 years. Um, and ideologues are the people who follow the woke ideology that goes with that. Or an ideologue would be somebody who who went with the Aryan Brotherhood without really giving it any thought just to fit in, that kind of thing. So an ideologue is someone who is used by the movement to, to make it profligate a bigger voice and give it more uh, clout than, than it needs in society. And, and wokeism is, is dying. It's taken a massive knockout punch by Donald Trump winning the US election. That's pretty much what it needed. It's taking a big pump because the whole of Europe is against woke. Every, every, generally every sort of sensible, common sense person is against the woke ideology. And unfortunately, that is a massive majority of all Western nations. So woke is on its way out, but it won't go quickly because people believe in, in these things and they've been brainwashed to believe in these things. And it's very troubling how it's happened. Uh, one troubling fact is that the top five donors to higher education systems in Europe and the USA are Qatar, terrorist ha haven until recently when they've kicked them all out because Donald Trump's getting into office. Interesting, he's having an effect on world politics already. Number two is the UAE. Now, Qatar's part of the UAE, but it's given so many more billions, it gets its own spot. Number three, China, which you'd assume would be number one. Number four, Saudi Arabia, neither friend nor ally. And number five, Iran, definitely an enemy. So when you look at that, it started in 2002 with, I think, a 7.5 billion donation from Qatar to the World Health Organization, which is quite a corrupt organization. And through its NGOs and various outlets, it spread the seeds of wokeism. Um, and it was a masterclass, really, of our, by our enemies of actually, how do we take, how do you take down a, a country like America? I mean, Europe and America, but frankly, it, when it comes to the global stage, America is the, the daddy of the global stage. China is still is kind of there, but it's kind of uncle's level. It's not it's not the daddy, and no European country has really that much clout anymore. I mean, we we're we're one of the top nine Western countries that are, that are seen as you know vital for the defence of Europe and the West, um, but overall the power the power gap is extraordinary. So um, when when America has a common sense election and rejects wokeism, then it can, well, it always knocks back. Wokeism came from America. It's generally had six month lag time to come over here. All the same things. When we taught CRT at schools, which is we, we need to be removing and getting anything, CRT, DEI, um, queer theory, gender theory, uh, trans story how they need to be out of schools because they're not appropriate to teach to undeveloped human brains and that leads to indoctrination for example 0.04 percent of people suffer with gender dysphoria and if left to their own devices 85 percent of those choose to stay in the same body now we've introduced gender affirming care since the who with no reason whatsoever declassified it as a mental health disorder which meant you didn't need a doctor's diagnosis to get it and you didn't need to wait till you were 18 that was a new thing that happened 
And that's why there's lots of DTAP transitioners, the puberty blockers, the sterilization, sterilization drugs they give to uh, prisoners uh, to sterilize them. There's no difference in the drug. And so, you know, you're 14 or 10 year old or whatever, that, you know, if they get the gender affirming care, which is a nice way to say child butchery, then what they don't know, but and what they're not told is that they'll be infertile for the rest of their life and that they won't really ever experience any sexual pleasure. The right of going through puberty is how you understand how you, what you really feel. And that's why if, if the statistics are still true. They've been true for 40 years. If you leave people to go through the therapy, talk through it, go through the, um, the, the operation, go look at all of your options, 85% don't transition. But now there's this rush to get minors to transition, and it's disturbing. The Hass report from, was a, from the UK proved it to be experimental child butchery, and the WPATH leaked files ch showed the World Association of Transgender Health lying to gender clinics around the world, pretty much all of them, and they lied about their qualifications. There's so much in there. They all deserve prison time, all the 12 directors. There's a video in there. I recommend you look at the data. Um, but this is all about identity and it's been very unhealthy for our kids because they've been taught, they weren't taught history, they were taught history from the, the from the lens of the oppressed versus the oppressor. They weren't, they weren't allowed to make up their own minds about how history went. Their minds were made up for them and that's I think the critical problem we've had is that their minds are made up for them and they're taught what to think about history, what to think about other things, what to think in general. And they uh, end up very confused, very and very hateful because of the ho horrible things that have happened in history. Now, if you know, uh, if you only look at them, but you don't look at the great side of the Roman Empire or the British Empire, you don't see the any of the good, but all of the bad, then obviously everyone's going to come out with a much more hateful view. And CRT is just teaching people how to be racist towards white people and when it's most appropriate, which is all the time at the moment. And it's all done based on Marxist theories. Marxism is everywhere in universities, like 90 plus percent of professors are Marxist ide ideologues, left-wing, and quite a large percent of them are far left-wing. It's, it's really a contagion. It's almost borderline personality disorders have almost become contagious through this kind of woke mania that we've had over the last five or so so years it was building up before that but it's really gone nuts i mean it's the best example you can get the the boxing the female gold winning boxing champion and silver winning boxing champions are men with penises they're the female olympian champions that's not right you know society's gone wrong when that's a fact can't deny that one but the left, they clung to their identities. That's why they couldn't get rid of Kamala Harris, because they could never be seen to get rid of a black woman. But she really was a DEI hire. Her, she, her CV was atrocious. She was a really far left radical. Um, she trashed San Francisco. She actually let a man rot in jail. So her reputation legally um, as a attorney general didn't get um, get a black mark on it. And she let a man rot in jail called Kevin Hooper for years. And also not years, for months after this new DNA evidence came in exonerating him. It should have been 24 hours he was out, but no, he was there for months because she kept it secret and gave it, had to be forced to give it up by law. So you have, you have her. She, she wasn't qualified to be vice president. Now we, on the other side in England, the conservative leader, Kemi Badenoch, the first black, uh, leader of a major political party, um, it isn't the exact opposite. She got there not because of her race. She got there possibly in spite of it, I, although I don't think it really is that important anymore in British politics. But she got there through being strong, being congruent, having a good message, sticking to her integrity, sticking to her morals. And she has the makings of a great leader for this country, and I hope she is um, a leader for this country in the near future. Um, but uh, the definitely... Uh, the people who cling to their identity, they've been taught to group up. 
and um, you see the you see these protests the anti-israel protests and actually if you watch the interviews of their people in there are there for climate change they're there for just stop oil they're there for um any number of they're there for trans rights but they just have this idea of intersectional victimhood being the link and bond between them and that's how they live their lives being a victim and that's their identity and they cling to it and then fill their fill them themselves with the echo chamber that tells them they're right and that the world is as unfair as they think it is when it's not yet they haven't yet tried to live in it properly that's the problem with the woke young people they want to change the world before they've learned to live in it that's never happened before never could work never will work if you want to if you if you ignore history you're doomed to repeat it if you delete history you're guaranteed to bloody repeat it so it's insane the, the demands of a few that are being kowtowed to by so many diversity equity and inclusion just rips meritocracy out out of the door whatever get talents you were given under that method don't matter to anybody but that's ridiculous you want the best person for the job in every situation there's no reason for that not to be the case uh, now affirmative action got rolled back but dei came in and you know suddenly what you you need if you've got a big company eventually you're going to have to have one percent of um omni queer pansexual lesbian black women in your thing if you want to break dei down that bad it, it is that but initially 50 50 mean um, male and female men and women like different jobs it's a big thing it's a problem so um you know it's it's never going to be a 50 50 on that at all and realistically there was a comprehensive study done in uh, the, the um, Nordic countries, so they, Den Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and they gave the most equitable possibilities to men and women. And it was a left-wing run study. They were expecting the results would be, would be that the women and men would equalise in the jobs but in fact they went further apart because women prefer jobs with people men prefer jobs with things and that's just one variant out of about 18 that decides who goes into what job and people talk about the top one percent they're always talking about the top one percent but the top one percent generally aren't very happy people they work seven days a week probably 10 to 12 hours a day they're workaholics they're high functioning and they go after one thing until they break the market and become the best at it but not a lot of people want that for themselves the happiest person i know that has he works as a teacher and he's got two kids and he's got you know he, he gets paid he gets by but he's happy as ha the happiest person i know by far far best far happier than any rich person that i that i know i just um don't think that everybody would want the job of the top one percent so we should probably stop complaining about it especially when it accounts to over 70 percent of our taxes so the government money that they get comes from the top one percent so to villainize them and keep saying it needs, it needs to be more tax on them more to, you know it, it, the answer isn't more tax the answer is better enterprise more jobs um it's it, it, encouraging manufacturing it, localizing and this is this is a problem with identitarians and ideologues they cling to this group view of changing the world because they think the world's in such catastrophe that a whole thing needs to be rewritten and it's all a colonial nightmare when every single one of them uh any anyone who is not black in america is a european now they may have been there for a long time and they've, they've got latinos the left now call them latin x they don't like latinos don't like that but they've just started doing it what a weird thing to do um and uh, honestly it's the idea i mean it, theoretically usain bolt could run in a race against every able-bodied person and they could all finish at the same time the difference is he'd have to probably be dragging a ball and chain and every person in the world who they were bullied would be stuck on a different part of that 100 meters so that they all finish in exactly the same time everybody wins nobody wins anything and it's a rubbish race because there's no point and that's the idea of dei is to make it so that 
it, the, everyone gets the same in the end, uh, which means that the guy who works seven hours a day, uh, seven days a week, 12 hours a day, gets the same as the guy who doesn't and sits and watches his TV and eats junk food. Um, it's called equal wealth distribution. It's another Marxist theory, and it's another thing that Kamala Harris was looking at, and some of the things she wanted to put into place were very dangerous to socialist and even communist um, ideas. So she got rejected, and it will get rejected because we didn't, we don't like the idea of communism. We don't like the idea of a massive government that holds that much sway when they're supposed to be elected officials who do the general bidding of the will of the country. And you only have to look at the UK to see that the Labour Party is doing the general bidding of against the will of the country, which is why there's a petition with more than 3 million signatures to have a, re uh, to have a new general election because Keir Starmer's popular um, unpopularity in his first year is a record by a mile and his overall popularity is literally on the floor so you know conservative people doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean what you vote conservative means to conserve so it means you it's generally people who have conservative values have good family values like manners respect decency dignity um honor and bravery you know what well, bravery is different that can come from either way but um what what you notice in the young today is a lack of values really there's there's a huge lack of values and a huge stack of importance put upon their identity and how that fits with a certain group dynamic now, here I am, and we've got this white supremacist talk, you know, white guilt, white fragility, white supremacy, white privilege, it's all bollocks. Robin D'Angelo didn't even have that book reviewed before she published it. It's one woman's opinion, and it's dictated culture for quite a little while now, and it's getting a bit annoying. See, I'm. if you use the Marxist victimhood intersectionality chart to find out how oppressed you are on that chart, you look at me, I'm a 42-year-old... I'm English, 42-year-old, white, straight guy. Bottom of the pile. But I'm disabled. Whoop, right back up, way above most people. I'm right in that victimhood thing if I want to be. I don't, obviously. That's the whole point. Um, but, uh, and that's why you don't judge a book by its cover. You judge a book by its contents. Um, and that really is not is not being applied by half the world at the moment. Half the world is judging a book by its colour and half the world is judging a book by its contents. And that's not a good place to be. We need to be judging by the contents, by, you know, you're not unconsciously racist, you're not implicitly racist. If you haven't got racist feelings in your head, you're not a racist. So don't worry about people saying that you are because they're damn wrong. It doesn't make sense. It's not a good theory. None of D Robin D'Angelo's theories would have passed as a subject that was acceptable for a doctoral thesis. And that's something to to remember, because she's written this book and people have just treated it like the Bible. And suddenly whiteness is a problem. And, you know, uh, whiteness is the new problem of our era. Or... Um, White people are responsible for all slave, uh, slaves globally. Now, you probably don't necessarily know that 12.5 million people were enslaved in the transatlantic slave trade, mainly to America, but some to Europe. That's a lot of people, right? We're 50 million people actively enslaved today, and we're doing nothing about that. So it's a very much... You pick one side of an argument and you argue it and you get shrill about it and you will not have a counter argument put to it. Like, why are you? Why? Why did this free Palestine, which turned up into anti-Israel, anti-America, anti-West, burning flags and violent mob behaviour, why did that transpire? What, what, what was? What was the fit? And it is this identitarian group thinking. The LGBT representation inside those groups has been up to 30%, and I've heard regularly 10 to 15%. That's way above the national average. So it is, it's a group protest. And what will happen is I think eventually they'll realise that what they're protesting is themselves and their very existence because they weren't taught how to live in the world. They were taught what to do, not how 
to do. They were taught what to think, not how to think. And these identity scenarians, these, these professors and these radical left-wing activists who were funded by terrorists and who are funded to cause mayhem, have done their job brilliantly because all of those grants to the universities, they went with, with conditions on what got taught and also speakers allowed on college. So people who are actively calling out for jihad were welcomed onto Harvard to speak to all the students. So no wonder they're all mixed up and, and their emotions are mixed up and they have been taught the world's a terrible place. They can't seem to change it, although they keep they do the protest thing, it gets more and more violent, but they're not changing it. As none of them have been to Gaza to try and see it for themselves. Um, and it it's not working because we it just gets pushed back because we, we don't want uh, middle class white kids with white guilt shouting about killing all Jews or Zionists or whatever it is, uh, you know, whatever horrible vitriol comes out of their mouth. It's a reflection of the hatred they have inside and the hatred they have inside will boil down to the fact that they haven't got a personal identity because an individual with a personal identity can join a group and lead a group or have been be part of multiple groups but they take their individual self-esteem from themselves whereas as like the lgbtqia plus infinity sign that's a short acronym movement has taken over from the LGBT movement and all the old ones want nothing to do with these new uh, 454 gender uh, people, the alphabet people as they're called. It's just, that's pure carnage. Uh, it really is. And, and, and it's such a shame that this was, the conditions were set for this to happen. They, it was all, it was brainwashing and programming. And put it this way, they, on t October the 6th, our, our kids weren't anti-Semitic on October the 7th, they were, and it clicked in. And that's a phenomenon that we'll be looking at for years, but it's not right. And none of us agree with it. And that's where the conservative pushback comes back. Conservative means to keep what's good in the world. So it, a lot of old school libertarians are also conservative in that respect. A conservative does not mean a right wing person. It can be a mild left wing person, centralist person, but it's something he doesn't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. And that's what the other side, the far left, radical, identitarians and ideologues do. They want to completely just start afresh with their new ideas and make the world a completely different place. And the rest of us don't want that. So it's a loss for them, unfortunately. But they tried. Anyway, I'll leave it there. That's enough of this one. I hope you understood a bit more about how they kind of get, how their heads got into the places they did. Um, you be lucky this week. I'll be good and I'll speak to you soon.